So in today's video, we are going to be looking at the new Nerd QX or Nerd Minor Range OS. So this comes from the creator of the Nerd QX, and they kind of done some more upgrades to that actual UI and their firmware, but they are going to be releasing it to the public for all of the Nerd Miners in terms of the Nerd QX, the Nerd Gamma X, Nerd Miners, just the smaller ones, the Nerd QX and the Nerd Octax, I believe, to allow you to actually switch the pool hash rate or split the pool hash rate so that you can mine various different coins, or you can also split it between solo and pool mining. So this is an update that's coming very soon, and today's video we're going to explore kind of what it looks like, kind of where the idea spawned from, some variations of it, and what we could play around with in the future with these Nerd OS miners. So let's head over to the computer and check this out. So as we said at the start of the video, today we're going to be talking about hash rate switching or hash rate splitting. So this is not really a new concept necessarily, but it is a concept that is going to be available for all of the nerd QX or nerd variations or nerd miners that are out there. And this is mainly coming from the nerd QX developers. So this is a custom Nerd OS, which they are using on the Nerd QX. And this was a upgraded version of the Nerd QX, basically where you had a better view and more ability to overclock the Nerd QX. A little bit of backstory on that is that the Nerd QX had kind of a limitation in the firmware, where it basically cut out as soon as you started pushing it above a certain frequency and clock. The reason for this was to protect the Nerd QX and then the Nerd QX developers actually came along and said that they're going to develop something that can handle these higher overclocks on these devices. So there is a video on the channel, us exploring that. But the main thing that I want to dive into now is mainly the firmware slash the OS, which can give us a option to actually split the hash rate. So this is what the dashboard looks like. It's very similar. You have your hash rate shares efficiency, best difficulty, your hash rate chart, and then some of these performance power and heat by here. The main thing that we were interested in in the video was this split of ASIC temperatures. So you have different numbers for different ASIC chips on the board. Now this is interesting because it gives you an idea of which chips are actually making the most in terms of the heat. So normally on the XOS it would just give you an average of all of these combined together. But now we can see each individual chip this is going to be good for just viewing it, seeing if one of them is not really working. And that might be due to thermal paste or it might just be a faulty chip. But we also wanted to do a test at some point on what thermal paste is the best. And I think that this XOS or Nerd OS would be really useful as we can then change each thermal paste on each chip and then do a test on the ASIC temperature. I know it's not going to be fairly accurate, but if there's a massive difference between one to two chips on different thermal pastes, and we can kind of rule out which thermal paste is the best in terms for the bit axe miners, for the nerd axe miners, all of them out there. But mainly this kind of ASIC temperature split also feeds into what we're talking about today, which is hash rate splitting. So this is not necessarily a new concept as we've kind of seen it with things like Luxor. This came out ages ago. And I think it was around three to four years ago it came out, but you can configure pools to basically mine two different pools when you want to on your board. This is mainly for Bitmain miners, so maybe you point a certain amount of hash rate towards a solo pool, and then you point a certain amount of hash rate towards a mining pool that you can actually gain rewards on, and then maybe you point to your own node, things like that. And that allows you to split your hash rate out so that you have a chance to hit a solo block, and then you might have a chance to just bring in some profitability and then again you might have some chance to hit a solar block on a different pool. So you can see how it's kind of set out in the UI by here. So you have your pool address, your username, password and the main thing is the hash rate split by there. So that's 33% of the hash rate, 34 and then 33 again. So equaling 100% of the hash rate split out between three pools. And it says on here you can add as many pools as you want to so you can direct your hash rate to whatever you want to. And it kind of looks like this. So you, let's say you have a 100 terahash, you can point it to pool 1, pool 2, pool 3, pool 4. 
and then if that disconnects it can update the percentage ratio for the rest of the pools. Now this would be useful I think as a hash rate split because you can then solo mine Bitcoin whilst also bringing in some revenue from Bitcoin mining. Mainly it would be useful actually on the Avalon Nanos and the Avalon Minis just because those are kind of more terahash but the fact that we have it available or we are going to have it available for the nude QX and nude QX is really good because I believe that the XOS that they're developing is going to be on every nude miner model and it gives us the kind of best of both worlds. In my opinion this is kind of the same thing that you're doing with Parasite Pool but you are actually generating a steady revenue so Parasite Pool runs off the fact that the pool will hit a block and you mine towards that. You get paid one Bitcoin if you hit the block and then if you don't hit the block you get a share of the profits depending on your hash rate submitted to the pool. So it's kind of like that but you do generate revenue depending on where you're actually pointing it and then you have a potential to actually hit a solo block worth three Bitcoin instead of the one on Parasite Pool. So here's kind of the update. Nerd OS, there's much cooler feature coming in the next version, something that may be asking for a dual pool in the Nerd OS. This could be particularly cool for multi-ASIC miners such as Nerd QX, Nerd QX and Octax. You'll be able to set the pool balance and could for example configure 30% to these different variations of pool payouts and 70% of the hash rate into solo mining or distribute both to a solo pool for example to test a new solo pool or create a really good fallback if you run a second node. So this is kind of what it looks like. You have your pool mode there and you set it to dual pool. I don't know if this is going to be allowable for more than two pools and I also don't really see a need to have more than two pools. So because there's only two types of Bitcoin mining realistically you would only want either pool mining in terms of revenue generating mining or just solo mining. And then you can see the pool balance is split by here so this is your primary pool and then this is your secondary pool and then I believe you're going to be able to enter that in. So they also did say that it's still in development phase not yet available but it will be usable on all Nerd OS capable clients when it's rolled out so that includes the Nerd QX. This opens up a lot of different use cases including mining other coins based on SHA-256 or as I said one party actively earns sats the other part is solo mining or on the node or two nodes as a fallback asset. So this actually would be very interesting because then you can actually mine, let's for example say you want to solo mine Bitcoin Cash and you also want to solo mine Bitcoin. You have the option to set two pools, so one to solo mine Bitcoin and then one to solo mine Bitcoin Cash just because you feel like you're going to have a better chance at Bitcoin Cash. You're basically splitting the hash rate and saying I want this there and this there. Obviously, I don't know how it's going to work in the background if you do hit a difficulty that's higher than Bitcoin Cash. For example, let's say that you are mining to the Bitcoin pool and you submit a share that is higher than Bitcoin Cash. That's not automatically going to fall back into the Bitcoin Cash block that would potentially be hit. So I think it's just going to take shares and divide them equally. I don't think it's going to go based off of the actual pool that you're seeing. I don't think it's actually going to switch between the pools depending on the difficulty that you're submitting. That would be very, very hard. I don't think it'd actually be possible to do that. But it does open up a lot of variation for different kind of ways to mine these SHA-256 coins. Even if you just are solely going for Bitcoin, you can still solo mine and pool mine at the same time. I'd like to see a version where you have more than two. So this, so as I said, it only looks like two. On the Luxor OS, I believe you can add as many as you want. And it would kind of look a little bit like this. So you have your pool configuration, you have your main pool, and then you have your fallback pool. So you could maybe set this to, let's just say, Bitcoin Cash, and then this one to Bitcoin, split it out 50-50. And that means that half of your shares, so if we go to logs here, show logs, I'm assuming that half of the submitted shares would go to one, and then half of the submitted shares would go to the other. So that would be very cool to see overall. But I also had the thought that if this does become very popular in the Bitcoin mining space and it eventually turns into kind of a Luxor, a Luxor OS type of deal where you can have more than two pools on it, that would actually be very interesting as the main experiment that I would want to run 
is actually basing all of your mining hash rate based on the difficulty of all of these SHA-256 coins. So for example, you'd point maybe 50% to the Bitcoin network and then 25% to Bitcoin Cash. And then you would also point another 10 or 5% to Bitcoin SV, 5% again to Fractal Bitcoin, and then maybe an extra 3 or 4 to Digibyte, and then 1 or 2% to these lower coins down here. So that would effectively give you the optionality to solo mine Bitcoin, whilst also trying to hit a Bitcoin Cash block, a Bitcoin SV, and a Fractal Bitcoin block, as it would give you a lot of freedom over your mining kind of opportunities. I also think it would be good to split out your hash rate based on the chip. So you solely have one chip that's doing one pool, and then you might have one chip that's doing solo mining, one chip that's doing maybe Digibyte, one chip that's doing Bitcoin Cash. So there's a lot of variations, and I think it's definitely a good innovation that we could see. I know with the Luxor OS, that can only be installed onto, or that can only be ran onto the Bitmain miners, and currently not available for these smaller solo miners. For example, with the Zyber 8 that you just saw, that has eight chips on the board. So effectively, you split out those eight chips and say, one of them is going to be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, and any other coin on this list. So I think this is really good innovation. This was just a quick video. I don't know when this is going to drop, uh, but I'm assuming that it is very, very soon once they've sorted it out. I'd like to see more than just a dual pool and allow maybe up to 10 even. That could put a lot of strain on the actual miner because it's trying to configure tasks for different things. But it'd be interesting to see when it actually releases us messing around with it. So we'll await the release of this and then we'll do kind of a video. I'm thinking we just go for Bitcoin and then Bitcoin Cash. So we have two pools and then we split the hash rate on the nerd QX. Effectively, you can do this if you have two miners. For example, you could just put one bit axe on Bitcoin, one bit axe on Bitcoin Cash. But if you only have one of these multi-chip miners at home, you can then split your hash rate however you want to. As I said, just a quick video, make you guys aware. I'll leave this linked in the description so you guys can check it out and go and follow them to get updates when this is actually coming out. Let me know your thoughts on this, what you would do in terms of videos or what experiments you'd like to see on this. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.